first arrive at the Indiana Dunes National Park, the park that's closest to Illinois, so the first entrance to the park. When you get there and you walk and you park your car, there's a trailhead that you can take that will take you up into the wooded area and over the top of the dunes. So this trailhead is called Diana's Dare, and it takes about 40 minutes, and it's a lot of stairs, lots and lots and lots of stairs. But they share the story of Diana. So her real name is Alice Mabel Gray. And Alice Mabel Gray grew up in a working class household in Chicago. And she was very bright, ended up going to many schools for grad school and ended up working at many different places. But being female in around World War I and trying to support your brother is not an easy task to make enough money to live and survive on. She had figured out this way of, um, at that point in time, um, the people who the landlords didn't require deposits for when you moved in the first month. They just required you to pay. And so she figured out how she could get into a place for a month before she would be kicked out. But it got to be too much. And so at a certain point, she decided that she was going to go live in the dunes. And she started living there in um, different shacks. Um, the one she talks about in her diary was made out of driftwood, where she made all the furniture out of driftwood also. And she became known because people would spot her and see her as unique and different because she's only 34, she's female, and it's like 1911. And she, of course, um, went into the lake every morning to bathe. So she became very known and famous, and people started doing news reports about her. And when people discovered that she was actually well-educated and knew a lot about science, and was a big advocate for the dudes, she was invited to come and speak at the Art Institute in Chicago for the group of people that had been working since the late 1800s to save the dunes. And so she came and spoke with a passion about the dunes. But we didn't get a national park in 1911. Because do you know what happened then? The war hits, right? And what do people need at that point in time? And what is Indiana famous for? They needed steel, right? They need lots of steel. Industry became the most important thing to the people in the nation at that point in time. And so they started building along the lakefront because they wanted access to be able to move their goods easily. So they started building ports and they started building transportation hubs. And people continued to work to save the dunes. But it wasn't something that happened easily. It wasn't something that happened right away. It wasn't something that happened because people looked at the environment and said, this is a place we need to protect. Instead, they fought hard until the 1960s to save the National Lakeshore there. When I had read about this story about Diana and about the creation of the dunes, I was reminded of the story of Moses that I read to you. Because we like to think that we can handle it all and take care of it all and be self-sufficient. In fact, we as Americans are encouraged to be strong and self-reliant, to be individuals. And yet what Diana found out, because she was born into the wrong time and place, was that she couldn't do it all on her own. There was no way for her to make enough money to thrive. She could survive, she could live, but she couldn't have the life that she desired or wanted. 
Well, Moses, as you remember, has been taking this very grumbly, complaining group of people through the wilderness. And what we didn't know about this grumbly, complaining group of people was that they were constantly asking him to make all the decisions, right? Like, we assumed that they were, yeah, he's leading them from spot to spot, getting them food, getting them water, getting them meat, showing them where they're going to stay, telling them the laws of God, which Hunter and Betsy and Sean will share with you next week. But we didn't know that they had sort of given up all control. They had sort of, and it's probably because they were coming out of slavery, right? When you are caged, it is hard then to make decisions as if you were free. When you have had your life put in a box and bound it with barriers and boundaries about what you can and cannot do, to now have the freedom to be able to do what you want to do, to be able to make decisions on your own, it's hard, because you haven't had to do that before. And so it says in this passage that they're exhausting Moses, right? From the time they stop for the night in their travels, they line up and have him settle all their disputes. Now notice it doesn't tell us what they were fighting over, but what would it be? The fire pit, your tent is too close to mine, you dumped the garbage in the wrong spot. I mean, what... I can't stand that you are too loud at night when I'm trying to sleep. I mean, any and every dispute that they could have had, they're bringing it to Moses to decide. Instead of figuring out how to get along with each other and work together, they're using Moses as the person who's supposed to answer and tell them what to do. Now Moses has just taken this on. He probably didn't even realize it, right? He probably, they just started asking him questions and he told them their opinion and pretty soon, instead of it just being one or two people, it's an entire line out the door of people wanting help. So his father-in-law comes along, comes to bring Moses back his wife and children. And when his father-in-law gets there, now, his father-in-law is the person who helped Moses survive when he had escaped Egypt after killing someone and had given him a place and a job and a family. And his father-in-law is there standing and watching all of this happen. He's watching this line of people keep talking and talking and talking and talking to Moses. And as the night wears on and he sees the line come to an end, he takes Moses aside and says, I want to have a talk with you about this. In fact, I love these words, right? He says, what you are doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, for the task is too heavy for you. What you're doing is not good. He has been trying to take on everything, and they have given him all that authority because they're used to being directed and told what to do. And it's hard now to spread your wings. But what he is doing is preventing them from growing, preventing them from becoming the people that God created them to be. And so his father-in-law, who also is in charge of a large band of people and is a priest of Midian, meaning that he worships a different god and is a priest in that tradition, he says to Moses, what you're doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out. You can't do it alone. So he asks Moses what is happening, what's going on. And Moses tells them, him all the things 
that he's doing. He tells them how the people come to him wanting to know what God has in store for them. Wanting to know what God wants. That the people come to him with their problems. That the people come to him for teaching. That the people want to know how they're to live their lives. And Moses has been answering all those questions. And his father-in-law says, you need to represent the people before God. I mean, they need Moses, right? They need somebody who can get water from the stone, who can tell God that they're hungry, who can tell God that they need a place to stop. So they need someone who can represent them before God. And they need someone who can teach them about God's statutes, about what God has in store for them, about the laws that God thinks they should live by. And you need to settle the big disputes, the ones that are going to lead to major conflict. When I want you to pick out some good people, I want you to pick out some trustworthy and honest people to help you with this task. I want you to find some good people who can listen to those complaints that you don't need to deal with. You don't need to deal with the dog going to the bathroom in front of their tent. Somebody else can handle that conflict. You have better things to do. And if you do this, it will be easier for you they will bear the burden with you. Then you all will endure, and the people will go to their home in peace. His father-in-law lays some straight advice up on him that is really good. How many of us try to take on too much? How many of us try to do too much and when we think about asking for help, we'll think it'll be more work to teach them how to do it than to just do it myself, right? I know I'm guilty of that. It's just easier to go ahead and do it than to share how to do it with someone else. And yet, if he wants to find peace, if he wants to endure, if he wants to not just live, he needs to let others in. He needs to let others bear this heavy task with him. He needs others to bear the burden with him. The story of the Indiana Dunes is a similar story of compromise of finding a way to get people involved in the task. Because the dunes were created in 1963 and 64 under what was known as the Kennedy Compromise. So our senator, yes, the Illinois senator, senator Paul Douglas, had decided that the Indian dunes needed to be protected and saved, and he figured out a way to make that happen. And he worked to make that happen. So Paul Douglas knew that there was such a thing as budget reconciliation. It's in the news again, right? He knew that there was a thing that would get him to get the dues saved. And what he did is in that process of getting enough votes to get the bill, budget bill passed, he promised them money for the port that they wanted that would help get the steel out to the rest of the world. If they were willing to give this land and protect it. So they call our senator, the third senator from Indiana, because he set out to save the Indiana Dunes. What he learned in the process and one of the things I think we've forgotten 
is that when we work together, what we can create is much better than when we're stuck fighting with each other. That what we can create together can create beautiful places like the Indiana Lakeshore. But when we fight with each other, what ended up happening is there's species and plants that have disappeared because part of the lakeshore disappeared. The task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. But they, they will bear the burden with you. Amen.